I bought one of the hottest, most requested, most talked about knife sharpeners on the market. The Tumbler Rolling Knife Sharpener. Or at least that's what I thought. Now you may be wondering, as was I, why these things, these rolling knife sharpeners, are showing up all over the place all of a sudden. Now I did some digging, I think I found the answer, and it's weird, very weird. So is this guy the same as this guy? Now initially, when I bought this, I didn't do any research into these rolling knife sharpeners whatsoever. I just went out and bought the one that everyone requested me to test. So it's a diamond sharpening disc, Helix Edge Boost technology. And I got hundreds, if not thousands of requests to test this exact sharpener right here. So that's the one that I bought. Now after I purchased this, and after I already did a bunch of testing, I found out that this may be, or may not be, a knockoff or a copy of an original. Now this version is comprised of two sides, a diamond abrasive side and a stainless steel honing side. Now I read some things that this design, this rolling knife sharpener design, was based off of a patent that expired in 1966. Now I looked at that patent and to tell you the truth, that patent really doesn't look anything like huh? this rolling knife sharpener. So. I'm not entirely sure that that is true. I have read this whole entire patent that everybody keeps referring to, but it doesn't describe anything about a rolling knife sharpener that you roll on a table. By everybody, I mean people on Reddit, on blade forums, on just random blog posts. Everybody keeps referring to this patent as the expired patent that this is based off of. This does not look like a rolling knife sharpener. They look like two completely, and they're described as two completely different things. So who was the original designer of the rolling sharpener? Now I looked all over the place to try and find an answer, and it seems I kept getting pointed back to a company based out of Germany who makes the Horl rolling knife sharpener. They claim they invented the original design back in 1993, and that's the company that everybody else also claims as the original inventor of the rolling knife sharpener. Now, I don't know if Germany has a patent process. I'm sure they do. But I also don't know how to verify that these claims are in fact correct. But here in the United States, those patents wouldn't apply anyway. Then I got even more confused because the guy in the Tumblr video... So is this guy... Sort of looks like the guy from the Horl company the same as this guy. And the guy from the Tumblr video also had a slight German sounding accent. We're at the farmer's market and we're doing the Tumblr. Now I'm not saying that these two are the same person. All I'm saying is that it's kind of odd. Is it the same guy? So for now, I'm pretty sure it's not. To the best of my knowledge, brothers, from what I can tell, cousins, Horl, special family licensing agreement, is the original designers. Who are you? since I have no evidence otherwise to claim that they're not. No one of consequence. Is that a German accent? I must. Now why does all this matter, you may ask? Because versions of these things are showing up everywhere. At varying prices and varying qualities. Somebody has to be an original and somebody has to stand above the rest. Get used to disappointment. Okay. I did reach out to the horror company for any info they could provide, but did not hear back in time for this video. If any further clarification is made on the original inventor, I'll leave it in the pinned comment below. I just want to know who the original inventor is because... Take a guess how much this cost. $50. Nope. Higher? Higher. $60. Higher. $70. Higher. $80. Higher. $90. Higher. I don't want to go higher. $100. Now, I tested this quite a bit when I first received it. I actually really liked the rolling concept, which is why I really wanted to to find out who the original inventor of this was in order to give them credit. But then the problem started. I initially played around with this for a couple of hours, sharpening about a dozen knives. And initially it sharpened very well. However, at around the sixth sharpening, I noticed that the sharpener wasn't working as well as it did originally. It was taking significantly longer each and every time I used it. Now don't get me wrong, it did work very well the first handful of times that I used it. But as I moved farther along into testing, the performance dropped off significantly. Now, by the time I brought in my test subject, someone with no knife sharpening experience, 
I have no knife sharpening experience. My brother. I think I'm going to let you use it and see what you get. I, I mean, just play around with it and see if you can... See if you can sharpen a knife. The sharpener was getting very frustrating to use, requiring a lot of time in order to get a sharp knife. And my beginner basically gave up and requested help. I mean, after the time I've been doing it, it doesn't really feel like it's done a whole lot. Rounded off apex. You want to make that like that. Right. Right. So basically, you just need to do it more. Okay. <laughs> So I, I like to sit there for so an my, hour my and my initial each side. well here's the thing my initial complaint with this and I haven't said this yet but my initial complaint was that this wasn't coarse enough and after a whole lot more playing around it's going to be like a 3 hour it's the tumbler the movie <laughs> a 3 hour sharpen it's 1 hour per inch so let's run through a quick sharpening we doll this on a brick even though this looks crazy, it's not. We do this all the time here, and with proper skill, you can resharpen this on a diamond stone in about 90 seconds. It's not that crazy. And the picture of this, you can see, the edge is not crazy messed up. The edge is just rounded over. After hitting the stopwatch, we sharpen till we raise a burr. Then it's time to try and minimize and remove the burr. After about 15 minutes, this is about as good as I could get. For about 15 minutes, Let's see. You can see there's still quite a bit of burr remaining and a good strop will clean this up. Now I know what a lot of you are gonna say, the knife sharpener worked, therefore it's success and you don't have any complaints. Well, that's not what we're testing here. We're not testing whether or not this thing can sharpen a knife because you can sharpen a knife on a lot of stuff. You can sharpen a knife on a toilet. You can sharpen a knife on a dinner plate. You can sharpen a knife on a brick. The question on whether or not you can sharpen with this thing is not what we're testing. We're testing whether or not this thing is a good value and if you should spend $100 on this knife sharpener. Now I saw a video where this guy, Tyler Tube, sharpened a butter knife to razor sharp using the original Horl rolling knife sharpener. So I decided to try and compare apples to apples and sharpen my own butter knife with the knockoff version. Boy, was that a mistake. I've been trying to sharpen this butter knife for <laughs> a long time. I don't even know how long it's been. I think a brick might be faster. <laughs> that took like two minutes. Shaving sharp. That's rather impressive. Might have to look into this. So what's going on here? Well, if we take a look at the surface before any use, we see diamonds everywhere on the surface, hence the aggressive cutting that I first experienced. Now, moving on to after some use, you can see that most of these loose abrasive pieces have broken free, leaving behind only the abrasive pieces that are encapsulated in the nickel coating. This is completely normal and is typically referred to as the break-in period of a diamond stone. The thing is, you still have to match the grit to the intended use. This is advertised as 800 grit, and I'd say that compared to other known stones of similar grit, this 800 is probably about right. But in my opinion, 800 grit is still way too fine for most casual users just trying to sharpen their pretty dull kitchen knives. So what grit should this be? It should be like this DMT Extra Coarse. This DMT actually removes steel quickly as you can see by the much larger grit size. Now what about the original Horl rolling sharpener? Well, they advertise 46 micron, which is about 320 grit. Much, much better. Now what about the stainless honing steel side that's supposed to remove the burr? Is this any better? Well, for the life of me, I could not remove the burr with this stainless honing side, and there is no incorrect way to use this. Despite my best attempts, we still had a big old nasty burr along the apex. If you look close, you can see the on the very edge. It looks all rough. Yeah. The only way I was able to remove this burr was to go to a six micron strop. And after a handful of passes, the burr's gone. Now I was curious on the hardness of the stainless honing side, so I checked it with the Rockwell tester. It's not even registering on the scale. It's like a six on the Rockwell hardness scale. 
In order for a material to be effective at removing material from another surface, the surface of the abrasive needs to be harder than the material you are removing. This is why quality honing steels are usually very high on the Rockwell hardness scale, in the range of 60 to 65 HRC, sort of like metal files are for metalworking. So even though we are using a very poor quality knife with a hardness around 50 HRC, the stainless honing side will basically do nothing to remove any material since it is not harder than the surface of the material that we are removing. The only thing it really does is work the burr back and forth till or if it breaks off. Since a strop contains an abrasive, it's much more effective at removing the burr. Now I know what some of the naysayers are gonna say about the hardness test, that it wasn't accurate because the body of the sharpener threw off my results or something like that. Here's a calibration plate at 47.4 HRC. Well, here's the calibration plate on top of the sharpener calibrating to less than half of a Rockwell hardness point. 47, we're right at 47, so we're within a half a point. We're actually less than half a point, 47.4. Now, before I even knew that there was an original version of this, I wanted to make these changes. If this was a coarse, a much coarser diamond, like 400 grit or 320 grit, this is probably like a thousand. This needs to be way coarser. And this needs to be a touch finer than this, like maybe 2000 or 1500 or 1200. If, that, if those two changes were made, this would be way, way better. And what do you know? The original version uses a coarse diamond side and a fine ceramic side on their sharpeners. Literally the exact changes I wanted to make. Now when I first got this, I actually liked it. I'm gonna call that a success. For the correct size knives, this worked really well at establishing the initial bevel. That's not gonna work. I think we have a size problem. But once I ended up testing this more, I realized that for the price they're asking, $100? The couple problems that I had should have been realized if this thing was designed by someone who actually sharpens knives. And it turns out they were by the original designers. Now the original is much more expensive, but based on my experience with this knockoff version, I know that that original version is a much better value, since the original one already fixes the issues that I had with this one. Now I had some really interesting thoughts to say here, but forgot to turn on my mic. So would I recommend this version? No. While it does work for establishing that initial bevel, and it does technically sharpen, so does a brick. Shaving sharp. It does a terrible job at finishing sharpening by not removing that burr. I'll leave a link in the description as to why this is so important. If this, if you already have this and it works great for you, like fine, like I, it doesn't, that doesn't really change anything. I get, I get so much hate mail when I'm like, I wouldn't buy this. And people were like, oh, well I bought it and it works fine. You're just using it wrong. Or, you're just a knife snob. Can't imagine. You just don't like it. You just you're just trying to sell those other stones that you recommend. I bought and paid for this with my own money. This is not a sponsored video and can say whatever I want about it. I'm not currently sponsored by any company and I'm free to link to whatever I want. It also takes way too much time in order to use after the break-in's done. The diamond side should be much coarser. That way you don't end up turning your sharpening night into movie night. <laughs> And your average buyer probably isn't interested in spending tons of time in order to sharpen their knives. If they were investing tons of time into it, then they'd be better off just learning how to use regular stones instead. Remember, when it comes to sharpening, there's no free lunch. You still have to know the basics. Apex, create a burr, remove burr. Round it off apex. You want to make that like that. If you don't know these basics, no rolling sharpener or thousand dollar clamp sharpening system is gonna help you. Werther's original.